Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we are making thin mint cake. Oh. Today's show is brought to you in part by Cindian Natural Food Products. Cindian is a family-owned and operated Australian company celebrating 20 years in business making a wide range of affordable, plant-based, gluten-free products like burgers, sliders, sausages, and more. No preservatives, stabilizers, emulsifiers, or additives. Just clean, minimally processed, whole food ingredients that never compromise on flavor. In the U.S., you can find Cindian products in many independent health food and specialty grocery stores, and in the freezer aisle at select Meyer stores, or by ordering online at Meyer.com. In Australia, you'll find them online at cindian.com.au and at your local supermarket. Cindian, guided by nature. So, I know you all know what I'm talking about when I say thin mints. You know, those Girl Scout cookies that once you open that box up, poof, they're gone, right? So incredibly delicious, but maybe not so good for you. So I'm going to teach you how to make a layer cake flavored like Thin Mints. So it's gonna be good for you. And if you have a little one that's got a birthday party coming up or even you having a birthday coming up, this is the perfect cake. You are just gonna love this cake. Okay, so to start, I've got two heaping cups of rolled oats that we are going to grind into flour. That is the first step. And you're just gonna grind this until you know, it, it's a fine flour, but not super fine. It's okay if it's still got a little bit of body still to it. Okay, so into the bowl we go. So we're gonna put our dry ingredients in first here. We're just gonna set the blender aside because we're gonna use that next for our wet ingredients. You don't even have to rinse it out, so it's great. I've got one cup of almond flour. half a cup of just regular cocoa, cocoa powder, and a quarter of a cup of black cocoa powder. This is kind of the secret here. It's gonna make it a really rich color. But if you don't have that, just use more of the regular cocoa powder. That will still work. Um, the Hershey's dark chocolate powder is a really, really good one. It's got a really, really rich flavor. Then one teaspoon of baking soda. and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Okay, so we're just gonna stir those up. That's all of the dry ingredients right there. I'm gonna make sure you get that mixed up well so none of those little chunks of chocolate or oat flour or almond meal stay there. Get it mixed up really good. Okay, so now on to our wet ingredients. So we bring back a blender, and I've got, uh, what is this, a cup and a half of dates already pitted, three cups of soy milk, but you can use whatever plant milk you like. Any kind of plant milk will work just fine. And then the secret flavorings our vanilla and peppermint flavor, or peppermint extract. This is uh, Simply Organic, I really like this one. It's good, but most, star most stores will have some kind of peppermint extract. So it's just a half a teaspoon of each. This I'm gonna use my, let's see here. And you want to keep these out because these are also going into the frosting. Okay, so now we're just going to whip this up 
until there aren't any more date chunks left. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh, that mint extract smells so good. It just makes me think of Thin Mints already, just by just that smell by itself. So now we're just gonna pour these together, mix it up really well. And I already have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And then I have three nine inch, maybe it's eight and a half to nine inch uh, round cake pans because it's gonna be three layers. It's gonna be like three thin mint cookies laying on top of each other. Oh, it's so good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Make sure that's all mixed well. Set that aside. Okay. And then I just have, these are just silicone um, cake tray or cake pans. I really like them because you don't have to oil them or put parchment paper on them. But the only problem is they're a little bit flimsy. So when you take them to the oven, you know, these, you really got to hold on to the sides because they're going to tip and, and, oops, and bend a little bit. So this part, you're going to have to just kind of eyeball, you know, one third of the amount in each pan. So I always start off with just, just a bit, then I go to the next one. And then the last one. And then whatever's left, I see which one needs a little bit more. And this doesn't fill the cake pans very full because, you know, it's a thin mint. So the cake is going to be really thin but it's three layers, so it will still be, you know, the height of a cake, but it'll have three layers to it. Okay. That looks pretty good. Looks like this one's got a little too much, so I'm gonna scoop this one a little bit into this guy. Okay, then you're just gonna level it a little bit. Okay, now into the oven it goes, and it's gonna go in for between 15 to 20 minutes. You'll have to check it at 15 minutes, and if it feels firm like it's done, you can take it out, but it probably will take the whole 20 minutes. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos are made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. We create this show to share all of the delicious plant-based recipes we use in our own family kitchen with the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world. Our supporting memberships offer great perks like access to our ebooks and in depth courses, including our 28 day plant based made easy course, where we offer a step by step guide to making the switch to a fully plant based diet. If you love our content, please join us on our mission to share this life changing message with the world and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay. Now we are on to the frosting. So I have two cups of cashews here that I've soaked for a couple of hours and drained. And that's gonna make it easier to blend, especially if you don't have a super high powered blender. If you just have a regular blender, you really need to soak your cashews first. The high powered blender can probably do it without soaking, 
It just takes longer and it's kind of irrita irritating. <laughs> one cup of dates already pitted. One cup of plant milk. This happens to be soy milk. Unsweetened, of course, because we are sweetening, sweetening with the dates. No refined sugars here. Then we've got three tablespoons of regular cocoa. And then one tablespoon of the black cocoa powder. And just like before, if you don't have the black cocoa powder, go ahead and use just a regular cocoa. And then one teaspoon each of vanilla and the peppermint extract. Now we're just going to blend this up until it's super, super creamy. So it might take you a little work. You might have to take it out and shake it, scrape down the sides a few times, but really this is gonna be super silky and creamy. Mm. And then we'll get to frost this cake. Okay, there we have it. If you want to come in and take a look at that silky creaminess, wow, it is amazing. And it smells amazing too. All right, we're just going to set that aside and we're going to get our cakes out and let them cool on a cooling rack until they're completely cooled. You want to wait till they're completely cooled or your frosting will turn into a soupy mess. So now we just wait. Okay guys, the, the cakes are completely cool, but now for the nerve-wracking part, because these are, the cakes are really thin. Even when you're plopping them out, you need to be real careful, because they can break apart pretty easily. So I'm just going to kind of slide my hand on, on, under there. There we go. Alright, one down, two to go. <laughs> so now we're just going to put a little, I'm going to put a little glob of this on there. You're not going to use very much. You know, you have to kind of gauge how much you have and how much should go in the two layers because you're going to frost the whole thing. So you're going to have to have enough for the top and the sides. So you don't want to use too much in the beginning. And then we'll just smooth that out. And there doesn't have to be a whole lot of frosting between the layers because it's a thin mint, right? It's that really thin layer of chocolate on the top. Okay. And you can just put this on a plate too. It doesn't have to be on a cake stand. I just happened to get a new cake stand that's really pretty. This nice little wooden one. It's kind of fun. And it just happens to be my birthday tomorrow and my husband's birthday on Friday. So guess what we're having our birthday cake right here. We're going to eat it early. All right, there's the first layer. Let's go for the second layer. Really easy, easy does it. Okay, right on top. Whew. All right, another glob. And it's nice too that we had time when you make your frosting while the cakes are cooling the frosting has a little bit more time to set up and get thicker because those cashews, the longer they sit, the more thick they get. And when you put it in the refrigerator, it gets even thicker. Wow, I wish you could smell this right now. It really smells, it's so minty and chocolatey. Mm. 
there, right? Last cake! But this one looks like the thinnest. Must not have got quite as much batter in there. Okay. Right on top there. Centered. Alright, so now the fun part, just frost that whole thing all the way down onto the sides. And hopefully if I gauge this right, we'll have just enough frosting. But it looks like we're going to get there. Guess who gets to look that? I'm gonna give that to Jeff. My towel here. Okay. So I kind of have a little method. So I kind of push it out, bigger globs out towards the edge. And I get about the layer, the th or the thickness that I want right in the center. And then I keep kind of edging it out to the edge. But I don't let it go over the edge yet. I just make sure I have plenty built up towards the edge. Okay. And then, oops, looks like I got a little thin there. All right, there we go. And then I take that, that edge and I just kind of let it glob off over the edge a little bit like that and then I catch it while it's going down and pull it around just takes a couple tries to get down the little technique and by all means I'm not a I'm not a great cake, cake decorator but this is just what I've learned works pretty well Oops, well, I got a big glob there. Okay, we are almost there. Okay, and this cake, this is a cake you really, you know, you're probably gonna gobble this up pretty, pretty quickly. But if you have some left, you can just, you know, stick it in the refrigerator. It'll last for a few days in the refrigerator just fine. I wouldn't leave it on the countertop because, you know, these are whole food plant-based desserts. There's no preservatives in them. So if you let them sit out on the counter, they just start, you know, it's a, it's a food, or a whole food, so it will start decaying faster. So it's better just to be safe, keep it in the fridge. Look at that. Woohoo! I can't wait to dig into this, so I'm going to grab a plate and a little cup of soy milk, and I'll meet you at the table. Oh my gosh, guys, it is time for the tasting. Oh, my mouth is watering. It smells so good, and it looks so good. And I already know that it tastes good, because we have tasted this several times already. Okay. Oh wow, it's so moist. Look at that. Okay, let's see if we can get that out of there. Oh, I think my knife is too big for this. Ooh. Come on out. Ooh, 
just gonna tip over. Here we go. Mm. If you can see that. Mm. <laughs> mm. I love Thin Mints so much. But as you all know, they're not that good for you. But this is mm, mm, mm. So give this video a like. Be sure to try this and I'll see you next time.